Ah, good morning. Nice to be with you again. Somebody left a comment in one of my videos about the paintings over my shoulder. I think it was Dan Booman. So I thought I would quickly, before I make something of the day, show you the paintings that are loitering on my walls. This is, um, as you're probably well aware, Girl with a Pearl Earring by Vermeer which I like very much, so I got a bit of paper and drew it out freehand and painted it with acrylics. So, you yeah, like that painting very much. I like Vermeer very much. The picture next to it is actually a print. I don't know how much of it you can see with my chandelier shining in the background. That's a print of a painting by a lady called um, Margaret Doverston who I like very much but I like that period in history anyway it's a nice period I'm 300 years too late ladies and gentlemen and next to that is Charles II which I saw in a book actually and liked it so I thought well yeah I could I could do that so I drew it out on a bit of board and got the acrylics out and did it and that frame it's in I got off a friend of mine he liked a picture called The Milkmaid by Jan Vermeer and he said if you do me The Milkmaid by Jan Vermeer you can have this frame so that's what I did. I did him the milkmaid. And he gave me that frame. A gesso frame. So that's that's nice. And over on the back wall here. Let's just move around here a minute. Now how much of this one you're going to see. That's called An Officer by Rembrandt. Again it's just something that I liked. I saw it. I liked it. And so I, I drew it out and painted it. And this one is a self-portrait of me in Elizabethan dress. Very sort of abstract. I've done it very abstract. But again, yeah. Nice. Colourful, if nothing else. And up here... Let's move up here. A couple of little miniatures that I did one weekend. Elizabeth I and Richard III. I had these two frames loitering around. I thought, what am I going to do with them? So I did two little miniatures to go in the frames. Just something I just did one weekend. And finally... Oh, let's see if I can get him in there. Portrait of my late father. Which turned out very well, actually. But it's a bit... Um, a bit unnerving when you're sat here. And you hear your father say, Oh, the boy is doing my portrait. And, you know, he's been, he's been dead since 1974. I did this portrait just before I came out as you know, male to female transgender. And so I hear my father say, oh, the boy's doing my portrait. Then on another occasion I'm working on it, I can smell aftershave. So it's, um, yeah, a bit unnerving to feel somebody breathing on the back of your neck, you know, because you know they're looking over your shoulder at what you're doing. It's um, very surreal. But anyway, that's, some of the paintings that I've done and some of the prints that I have so um, now you know why they call me Michelangelo so give me five minutes to have a wash and get dressed I'm still in my night clothes I slept in I had a I tell you what it was I had a bad experience yesterday afternoon I was eating my tea and suffered a very bad attack of indigestion um, I thought I was going to die literally I was coughing and spluttering and couldn't breathe I had a pain in my chest and shaking and sweating my eyes were running 
I actually, believe it or not, it's the first time in three weeks I've been outside the building. And I had to go for a walk, slow walk around the block to try and alleviate the attack that I was having. But thankfully I'm okay now, thankfully. So I've slept in a bit this morning. But anyway, let me sort myself out here a minute and I'll give you the answers to the quiz questions and I'll put up the results of the computer chess challenge. So I'll catch you in a minute. Well, back with you again. I managed to tidy myself up for a minute. Put myself together. Um, so that was my... some of the paintings on my walls. Um, first things first are Becca's command stand. I learned something very interesting yesterday. I went on Plastic Soldier Review website and I took a look at that box and saw what they or read what they thought about it. Well, they scored it 47 out of 50, which is a very good score, and they said, this is as good a box as you're likely to get on this subject, French Command, but there were one or two faults with the box, Firstly, which I mentioned the other day, the guy with the telescope one-handed, they said that's ridiculous, which is the truth it is. It's totally ridiculous. Um, these figures are cavalry figures, as you, as you all know. Chasseur a cheval. So they said, as the cavalry figures, why have they got no pouch on the side? What do they call it? Saber tash? What do they call it? There's no pouch on the side, which is true. It's very true. So that was a little bit of a downgrading. Um, these figures. Shaco is too squat, it needs to be slightly taller, which it does, I, I totally agree with that. Why they've made the Shaco so squat, I don't know. So that was that. Um, what else did they say? The Mameluke figure in the box, well there's two Mameluke figures in the box for personal servants for Napoleon. They always wore the big baggy sort of Mameluke trousers. And in the box they're wearing breeches. So why have they done that? But it's all little tiny things that can be put right by the modeler, if you see what I mean. Had I have realised this before I started painting, I would have corrected the one or two problems with the sabotage and the shako. I would have done them before I started painting, but I ain't gonna bother now because I'm gonna muck up a lot of painting work. But if I do any more of these figures in the future, which I probably will, I'll correct those issues. A bit like the um, we said we would do with the airfix um, British Hussars, if you remember back to those videos. There was problems with them that were not not good and we said we would correct them which we will do next time we do some because we've got I've got mountains of them here but one thing I did notice that I didn't pick up on <coughs> on PSR review was if you look on the box See that figure there? That's our cavalry figure. There's another one there as well. And you look at the shadow cloth. Well, he's got breeches on and 
um, mid-length boot and the jacket slung over his shoulder so obviously he's an officer figure as opposed to a regular trooper so if you look in this book uh, there we can read that 1815 the armies at Waterloo my copy of this is actually as you can see it's just falling to bits but if I take the appropriate page out it'd be easier there's our officer figure and there's the trooper you can see and you turn it over saddle cloth for the officer is leopard skin and for the ordinary trooper it's green with gold edging as you see on this figure officer leopard skin so this box is wrong or the artwork is wrong they've got an officer two officers in fact on ordinary troopers horses those saddle cloths on this box should be leopard skin so two valuable lessons learned by me at any rate you can't necessarily go by what's on the box the artwork it may not be right and do you if you're really interested in getting these figures accurate then do your research before you start painting and so forth and any faults you can put right which is what I should have done if I'd have looked on PSR website first I'd have noticed the mistakes put them right and we'd have better figures that's just my personal opinion so yeah so that was interesting a couple of lessons valuable lessons learned by Karen. So before I go quickly, I'll give you the um, answers to the eight quiz questions we set yesterday. Number one, how long is a DC-10 airliner? Well, a DC-10 airliner from tip to tail is 55.50 meters, or if you're still in old money, 182 feet one inch that's the length of a DC 10 so pretty long question two in the TV series on the buses which we all remember fondly I'm sure what was the bus company that Stan, Buster, Stan Butler used to drive for the bus company was the Luxton and District bus company Name the bus colour. What colour were the buses? Well, in the movies, the buses were red. But in the TV series, which is what I asked for, the buses were green. And that's what they were. They were green. And Stan's conductor, the name of Stan's conductor was, anybody? Jack Harper. That was his conductor. Question three. What is the world record for running the 100 meters in ski boots? The world record for running the 100 meters in ski boots is 13.71 seconds by a gentleman by the name of Nick Simmons. If anybody knows that it's been done quicker than that since, I'd be delighted to hear it. But as far as I could find out, it's 13.71 seconds by Nick Simmons and you can watch him on YouTube doing precisely that. Question 4. The total weight of bombs dropped in World War II by the Allies. By the Allies. Not by everybody. This is just by the Allies. <clears throat> I couldn't find a total weight of bombs for the Axis powers. But it's, it's probably going to be somewhere around the same sort of level, I would think. But the total weight of bombs 
trapped by the Allies in World War II was 3.4 million tons. That's a hell of a lot of bomb, isn't it? 3.4 million tons. And it makes you think how many of those are still lying undiscovered, unexploded. There must be, I reckon, a hell of a lot. So that was it. That was interesting. Question five. In the, te in the television series Rising Damp with Leonard Rossiter, the landlord of the CD boarding house, Mr. Rigsby, had a cat. What was the name of the cat? The cat's name, <coughs> a very overweight black and white cat, the cat's name was Vienna. That was the cat's name, Vienna. Question six. How many troops did Napoleon take into Russia when he invaded Russia? Now you Napoleonic war gamers, you should know this. Now there's not a precise answer for this. There's just a ballpark figure of what's been estimated, the lowest and the highest. And it's anywhere between 450 and 650,000 men he took to Russia. So if you said half a million, you'd probably be somewhere like it. Now can you imagine the supply train for all that, and the logistics of just feeding half a million men on the march and keeping them fed? I mean, that's phenomenal, isn't it? That's, that's, you can't get your head around it, can you? The logistics of that. Probably a lot of it was also living off the land as they went probably doing a lot of that foraging and pillaging but I mean I'd still have a hell of a lot of men keep on the move isn't it it's incredible so that was that 450,000 to 650,000 if you were anywhere within that range give yourself a point question 7 in the film Where Eagles Dare with Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood What's the name of the castle that's in the hands of the Germans? They're in a castle. They've got to get into this castle. What's the name of the castle they have to get into? The castle's name is the Schloss Adler. Anybody remember that? The Schloss Adler, which, which roughly translated means House of the Eagle. The Schloss Adler. And question eight, the final question. What is the main claim to fame of Frank Morris, Clarence and John Anglin? They had a claim to fame. Frank Morris, Clarence and John Anglin. Well, they were the three gentlemen that escaped from Alcatraz. That's what they did. And they disappeared. And nobody knows to this day what happened to them. I personally think they made it because the authorities say they drowned in San Francisco Bay. But three people drowned. <clears throat> you don't find one body. I mean, surely if they all three drowned, you'd find at least one body. And they didn't even find the raft, the homemade raft that they escaped in. Didn't find that either. And there are a number, if you look in, I've got videos on this type of stuff. I'll show you one of the videos I got. I got five minutes and see if you can get it and watch it, see what you think. It's a fantastic video on this escape. There are reports that on the night in question, there was a boat moored in the bay, just waiting. So my thought is on this somebody got word out before they escaped of when they would be escaping and so forth and the boat was waiting to pick them up and it picked up the three guys and the raft as well and took it on board so my my, my <coughs> feeling is they got out of that 
1962. So that's Frank Morris, Clarence and John Anglin. They escaped from Alcatraz. So somebody was saying, I think it was um, British Legion, you should do this again sometime. So give me some time and I'll work out some other questions for you. What I'll do also before I go and continue the Beckless Command stand, which I've done a bit to the horses. You see this saddle cloth on this one is sort of orangey at the moment. That's going to be um, leopard skin when I've done it. But the corners of the saddle cloth are pointed. They need to be round really for an officer's saddle cloth. But should have all been done beforehand. See? Karen's learning at this game, do your research first, get the thing right. But at least it'll be sort of leopard skin. And there would have been also no roll on the back of the saddle cloth for an officer's saddle cloth. So that should have been oh, that should have been cut off as well before I did this figure. So but they'll look nice on the gaming table I'm sure. I mean it's and Napoleon's horse coming along. <clears throat> Still some highlights to do on that because it wants to be wider than that. Can't really see that at the moment. Yeah, there you go. It wants to be wider than that. This is very light grey at the moment. It wants to be more or less white. So we'll get on with that. And I'll, in the link down the bottom, I'll put in the um, chess results thus far. I played four more games last night. Um, despite my nearly choking on my evening meal, I played four games last night. And there's one machine that's looking pretty strong, I have to say. I'm wondering where the challenge is going to come from for it. But there's still six or seven machines that haven't even entered the competition yet. So, anyway, look, I'm at 17 minutes, so I'm going to go and do some work. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I have another subscriber. BBB comes to mind. I forget what BBB stood for. But you know who you are, so thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for subscribing. I'm very grateful. We're up to, I think it's about 81 now, so... We're pushing towards 100, which is fantastic. So to everybody that subscribes, thank you very much. To everybody that watches, thank you. Um, be careful, stay safe in this very strange time. And we'll catch you on the next one.